Let's talk about the Yamaha DZR315. So I had somebody in the comments section ask me a few questions about it. Now keep in mind, I have only used these one time so far. And I wasn't even the one that mixed on them. I just set up the PA and had another sound tech mix on them. But I'm going to answer the questions as best as I can. After I use them on a few more gigs, my uh, opinions may vary slightly, but these are my initial thoughts. So, question number one was how stable is it if you stack two subs and then stack a, a top on top of it? So, I, I had this same wonder because when I first stacked them, I actually went up to it and like kind of pushed it a little bit. Now, I left the covers on. So when you leave the covers on, there's obviously padded foam between them, which does, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't seat super nicely on top. You know, if you take the covers off and stack a sub on top of a sub, there's grooves on top where they kind of lock in and, you know, almost become like one unit. With the covers on, there is that foam, they don't fully lock together. There maybe is a little bit of a wobble to them. I definitely would not worry about the two stack of subs. I was inside at a wedding venue, so I didn't worry about the top on there. That's one thing about the DZR315, is it's not like a dual 15 cabinet. It's not really tall. It, it's kind of short, and they really kind of seemingly compressed it as far as a three-way goes. Like if you go on their website and just take a look at it with the grill off, you've got the 15, but then the, the horn and the and the 8 are really kind of compressed together. I would dare say it must not be. I don't own the DZR15, but there can't be a whole lot of difference size-wise, like height-wise, between the DZR15 and the 315, I, I wouldn't imagine, but don't quote me on that. So anyways, it doesn't get like super tippy because it's not a really tall cabinet. It's kind of a short and fat cabinet or maybe maybe we could be nice and call it stocky. Because it is it's it's pretty wide. I mean the the DZR315 is as wide as an 18-inch subwoofer. So indoors, I'd say stability even with the cases on, not an issue. I didn't strap them down. Somebody could have bumped into them. I, I wouldn't have worried about it at all. With the cases off, it's going to get even more stable. So not a, not a huge issue, but I do um, some outdoor events where I set up on grass. Now, if you were setting up on maybe a not-so-solid surface, slightly off, you know, slightly uh, you know, tilted maybe one way or the other, I'd maybe ratchet strap them. Um, I don't, uh, let's see, you mentioned tying them together with several industrial grade straps. Typically what I do is I, I take two ratchet straps, one on each side, hook them into the handles of the top cabinet, hook them into the handles of the bottom cabinet, and just cinch them together a little bit. That's my usual, uh, my usual strategy if I'm worried about a cabinet wobbling or tipping one way or the other, but not not a huge issue. I, I would say when I had the uh, when I would stack two Vantec 18As and then a Vantec um, 215A, I was more we ratchet strapped those at every outdoor show. But the top of the Vantec 215A is a narrower cabinet, and it's a taller cabinet because it has 215s in it. So the center of gravity gravity makes it a little bit more tippy. So not not something I'd be super worried about with the Yamaha uh, speakers. Now, he had also asked about placing some wedges under the top cabinets for like a front fill in front. Now, it is, it is possible, you know, if you're up, like, hugging the front cabinet, you know, maybe the, the compression driver is shooting over your head, but at that same point, I don't think you want a compression driver blasting you in the face at, you know, 18 inches away from it. So, 
I personally would not do that. And, and it's not like the compression, it's not like the stack winds up being like insanely tall above your head. So I mean the 15 is probably like right here on a person when, you know, for my height, 15 is probably kind of right in your face. Because the sub cabinet comes to maybe here on me. And then the horn loaded 8 is maybe just slightly above my head, which I should be getting most of the frequencies from that. And that goes up to 2.5K. So if you are really close to it, yeah, the compression driver is, is shooting over your head. But you're not getting like a horribly degraded sound because of that. And if you step back a few feet, I, I didn't really notice anything. I walked around and I didn't really notice any horrible sound quality. Now, the main, what I would consider is if you have your two stacks really separate, these are only 60 degree cabinets in the horizontal. So if you have a really wide stage, you probably would want to use some cabinets. I would say not like right under as front fill under the, under the stack, but in the center of the stage just to do a front fill in front for the people that uh, might be right in front of the band or right in front of the stage. Um, cardioid mode. Uh, he's actually asking about how big of an issue is it having to flip a cabinet around and having casters there. Do people bump into them, snag them, hang their purses on them? Um, so I've, I've said in a lot of my videos, I'm not a fan of cardioid mode. Uh, you know, Flipping a powered cabinet around and putting it in cardioid mode without some of, some sort of crowd control barrier goes way beyond just the casters. The casters would probably be the least of my worries. My main issue would be people walking up and going, oh, I want more bass. Is that a gain knob? And then cranking it all the way up or messing with the display or unplugging the cabinet. You know, the, the, the casters aren't, wouldn't, wouldn't be my main concern. It would be having the user interface panel right there with the power switch right there um, for people to mess with. But I've thought about doing a video just on cardioid mode. I am not a fan of cardioid mode. And not, not to say I hate cardioid mode, it should never be used. I don't wanna I don't wanna come off sounding like that. I just think of cardioid mode as more of a selling tool for people. Um, you know, it just, it just reminds me, I feel like it almost gives the, the pompous sound tech or the pompous DJ just one more thing to uh, critique other people about. You know, you walk up to somebody, oh, you're still using a standard omnidirectional sub-configuration. I only use cardioid. <laughs> you know, that's what, that's what I feel like with that. Like, you know, it's the whole... Uh, like, oh, you use Virtual DJ, I use Serato, therefore I am better than you. Or, uh, you know, somebody that uses a Denon controller, oh, you're using that substandard club wannabe controller, I use a real Pioneer controller. You know, it just, it just gives the, the pompous DJ, the pompous sound tech, one more thing to be like, well, let me check off a list of why I'm better than you, I use Cardioid. But to be honest, it, that's not why I dislike cardioid. I do think there's occasions where cardioid mode comes in handy. Big concerts, a lot of times they want to keep bass off the stage. I mean, they might have 20 subs in front. Obviously, they want to keep some of that energy off the stage because they're trying to shoot it out into a full arena. You know, if you've got four subs, you're not dealing with that magnitude of bass. And... As a DJ, when I'm DJing an event, I kind of like that bass energy, you know? It, it, it uh, kind of makes me feel like I'm in the mix. I like, I like feeling that. I also, if it's really bassy, I do like to have a monitor so I can get a little bit of clarity as well for my mixing. But I kind of like that bass energy. If you're dealing with um, cover bands, you know, just kind of more of your entry-level band people, semi-professionals we'll call them you know I've had I've had issues where I've actually had a band complain that my bass sucked because they couldn't feel enough bass on stage so you do run into that especially if you're working with different bands 
Like some might take cardioid mode as being like, oh, this guy's sound system sucks. I'm not feeling any bass. So those are some things to watch out for and a big reason why I'm not a huge fan of them, of cardioid mode. I just think it's a new fancy selling point for people to be like, oh, I got cardioid mode. But big concert situations, corporate audio events, I mean, corporate audio events, you really shouldn't have a whole lot of bass anyways, but, you know, th there are instances where you'll want to keep bass off the stage. I get that. I just don't think it's as prevalent as people think it might be. But when you get into higher level systems, like if you take touring dual 18-inch JBL cabinets, number one, they're passive, but number two... They put a, a speak on on the front and the back so that you don't have cords coming out the front wrapping around to the back. You know, it's, it's nice to have the ability in these powered cabinets that are coming out to easily just rotate one around, push button cardioid mode, bam, you're done. But you really need to ask yourself, do you need cardioid mode or is it something where it's like, well, my cabinet can do it, so I should probably use it. Do you need it? If you don't... If there's no crowd control barrier, chances are you probably don't need cardioid mode to begin with. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Oh, asking about... Now, so the DZR315 does have a really low frequency response. And so when I tried it out here... I tried it with a sub and without a sub. And I will say without a sub it does seem like it runs out of gas faster. Like that 15 is trying to hit really low frequencies. And in a small event, it's probably just fine. Like you could probably take two DZR315s, you know, I hate to say stack them on a table because I think that's too low. Somehow you need to get them up higher. Uh, back in the day, we used to put dual 15 cabinets just straight on the table, the old EVT252s. But they're dual 15 cabinets, so the compression driver still gets up pretty high. The DZR315, like I said, it's kind of a short, stocky cabinet. I think you'd have height issues if you just stacked them on a table. So if you're trying to figure out some way of bringing something extra to stack them up higher, you might as well just bring a couple subs. But, like I said, I do think... So they've got good bass response but I do think they run out of gas a little fast when they're trying to hit those, those lower frequencies. So they sound good by themselves. Like I had them stacked on two subs. I unhooked the subs, just played full range music in the front of house main mode on the DZR315s. And they sounded good, nice and full, good bass response. But when you add the subs to them, that bass just fills out a lot more. It really takes a lot of the pressure off that 15 to hit those low frequencies and lets it hit the, you know, 100 to 700 range a little bit more. It just makes it a little more punchy, makes it not have to work so hard on the low end. So while it has the ability to do it, it doesn't do it perfectly. You're going to get a lot more a lot more oomph. You're not going to run out of gas as fast if you've got some subs. And there really is no substitute for subwoofers. No full range cabinet will do, even if it has a really low frequency response, they'll never do what a solid 18 inch sub can do. So if you're doing sound for a band, if you're doing a DJ gig and you really want that, you know, chest thump and bass, even though a cabinet says it'll hit down to I don't remember what the frequency response is on it off the top of my head. You know, hit down to 31 hertz at negative 10. Now you look at that and you think, wow, 31 hertz at negative 10? Like, my, uh, my Action 218 subs hit 40 hertz at negative 10, so you'd think these have got to be just super thumping. Well, not, not so much, you know? I mean, yes, they can hit that low, but there, it's not the same. At, it's not the same low energy as an 18 hitting hitting that 31 hertz. So it does sound better with a sub than without. I would definitely. I, I wouldn't do a band without. I probably wouldn't do a school event without a sub. Um, it just it just uh, 
maybe makes the cabinet more efficient not having to hit those lower frequency range helps break it up into a I mean you wind up with a four-way system so you you know breaks everything apart and lets lets you each speaker focus on a on a specific frequency range um, let's see here So, yeah, and then you said, you know, comparing it with a DZR12 and a sub. So, I don't own any of the other DZR series speakers, so I can't really compare, you know, a DZR12 or a DZR15 to the DZR315. But what I will say, just owning other standard, you know, pole mounted point and shoot boxes. The DZR315, one thing I noticed right off the bat was the clarity from the front of the room to the back of the room seemed better than other speakers I've owned. And so much so that at the event I actually looked up the page because I was like, how is this cabinet designed, you know? And, and obviously the compression driver is in a horn right under the compression driver. The mid-range is a horn-loaded 8, which really helps kind of project that mid-range clarity out there and actually I'm not sure if they say it anywhere I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of reading on it but it almost looked like the 15 was mounted back a little bit with just a little bit of horn loadedness to it like just a little bit of wedging over the 15 to maybe even help that project a little bit so I'm saying this without hearing the DZR12 or the DZR15, but I think when comparing the two, you're going to get better projection and better clarity at a distance. I think the DZR315 was designed to be not necessarily maybe a long throw speaker, but more of a long throw speaker than the DZR12, because the DZR12, you know, the compression driver is horn loaded, nothing else is. You know, it's just a standard uh, what, bandpass design where it's just mounted mounted in the front. Or wait, not bandpass design. Ah, oh, now I'm having a brain fart on my speaker designs. I'll maybe think about it in a minute. Um, maybe I'll add it into the description once I, once I get rid of my brain fart. It's Sunday morning. I was up until 2 last night. I got called into the office because somebody wanted to uh, grab a uh, my my Denon lectern, so I thought, well, I'll make a video while I'm in here. But uh, the speaker styles, anyways, between the the 12 and the 315, I believe they're same series, but two different styles. You've got more of like a semi horn loaded, well horn loaded, horn loaded mid range, horn loaded compression, maybe semi horn loaded 15 and also a narrower a narrower coverage pattern so I think you just get the throw and better clarity at a distance and then uh, he, the last thing he asked was uh, does the uh, does it mean a three-way cabinet does everything play well together in the cabinet I would say yes um, I walked up close I walked back I walked side to side and I was actually pretty impressed with how it seemed to sound the same wherever you go you know like uh, if I take my Action 215 A's now I had those installed in a venue for for a while and you know in front of house it, you know, dance floor would sound good, front of house it would sound good. You start to get to the back end of the bar and you'd start to lose that clarity. Like it just seemed like the high end would trail off more. Now with the DZR315s, obviously I haven't used them in that same venue to do a an even comparison, but up close it sounded nice and clear. I walked all the way back to the back of the room and it sounded clear throughout. It almost sounded like there was no no difference from front to back. I mean, obviously, volume level-wise, it would trail off, but it actually didn't seem like it trailed off a whole lot. I thought it really sounded good and clear throughout the whole the whole place. But keep in mind, I've only used this one time last night, 
And, uh, you know, I really like to use speakers in multiple, you know, indoors, outdoors, live sound, DJing, every situation I possibly can before I come up with a, uh, a solid, this is why the speaker is good. But it's my initial thoughts here, having it at one time. Seems like it being horn loaded is making a difference. And I don't notice any sort of... like, uh, separation, uh, between, you know, it being a three-way and having three different cabinets, it all seems like it melts together good. I didn't really notice anything there. But, uh, let's see here. Uh, does it really add something to smaller events over the DZR-12? I mean, if I was doing smaller events, I'd probably prefer using the DZR-12. I do plan on, well... I was going to say, at one point I planned on getting the DZR-12s. We'll see how my, my DXR build-out goes. I'm probably done buying speakers for a while now. I mean, I spent probably like 10 grand in the last two weeks. I have been utilizing that Yamaha rebate like a madman. So, I'm probably going to be done buying speakers for a while. But I would eventually like to get, you know, I might, I don't know. My ideas change as, as, uh, down the road, like, I'd kind of like to get the DZR-10s and see how they work, but I'd also like the DZR-12s. I would just like every speaker that Yamaha makes. I'd really like every speaker that everybody makes, but uh, smaller events, if I was using a single 18 and a top cabinet, yes, DZR-12 and single 18s. If you're planning on doing two 18s, I would get the DZR315. Would I want to bring the four subs and two DZR315s uh, out to every gig, including small gigs? No. Uh, this is the big system I've been putting together. So this is specifically for bands, you know, rock bands, bigger venues where I need volume, um, outdoor events, street dances. If I'm doing a smaller band, smaller venue, I'm probably just going to try to bring out my, like, four of the uh, DXS-12 Mark IIs, and then some uh, DXR-12s when I buy them. I don't have DXR-12s yet, I've got DXR-15 Mark IIs, but I do plan on getting the DXR-12s just to complement my, my stack. I don't know, like having a bigger top than I do subs. But um, that's probably going to be my, my small to mid-size setup, because for 12-inch subs, the DXR12 Mark IIs thump. They're very surprising for a 12-inch sub. So that's my small to medium size show. And my DZR DXS18 XLF, that's my large system. So I want to see, you know, 250 to 300 people out in the crowd for me to bring that one out. It's got to be a, gotta be a good rock show or, or a big DJ event for that to happen. So I think you really just have to look at what, what size shows you're going to be using it with. But uh, anyways, if anybody else has any questions about the system, throw it down in the comments section. If it's, uh, if it's an easy question to answer, I'll just type it out there. If, uh, if you've got quite a few questions, I'll probably make you a video. Anyways, until next time, have a good day. It was Bass Reflex. So Band Pass would be the style of sub that the DXS 1215 Mark II and the uh, DXS-18 are bandpass style subs. Standard, front-loaded, base reflex design would be your standard subwoofer, like the DXS-18 XLF, or just a regular speaker cabinet. Anyways, I thought I'd throw that in there.